Hi Kindergarten! Today I'm going to teach you about Holy Thursday and we are about to enter, like I said, Holy Week. Holy Week starts next week on Sunday and inside of Holy Week, at the very end of it, there is the shortest season of the church year and it's called the Triduum. It's kind of a funny sounding word that's because it's Latin. It only lasts three days. They are some of the most special and holy days in the whole church year. Triduum means three days in Latin. That's why it's called that. So during the Triduum, we celebrate the events of how Jesus saved us from our sins. And Holy Thursday, that's next Thursday, it will be the April 9th. Um, holy Thursday was the day that Jesus celebrated his last supper with the apostles. That's what this is a painting of that you see right now is a painting of Jesus at the Last Supper. So usually on Holy Thursday, our church will hold a special mass that celebrates the way Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And I'm going to read you the story from the Bible about what happened when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. It is a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. So when I'm done, you can go look it up in your own Bible if you want. A reading from the Gospel of John. It was now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. That means giving Jesus away to somebody who wanted to catch him. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So Jesus rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin, like a bowl, and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, "'Are you going to wash my feet, Lord?' Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and head too. Jesus said, those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not have to wash themselves except for their feet. All of you are clean, all except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have just done for you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord. And it is right that you do so, because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, do you understand why that is such a big deal? Look at their feet in this painting. Do you see what they are not wearing? They don't have any shoes on, do they? People in Jesus's time, especially where he lived, did not wear shoes and socks. It was pretty warm there. They didn't really wear shoes and socks. They wore sandals. Now think about your feet when you wear your flip-flops in the summer and you're running around or when you're, using, you're wearing your sandals without any socks. Do your feet look nice and crisp and clean when you take off your sandals at the end of the day? Mm -mm. I bet they look really sweaty and smelly and dirty. And that's what the disciples' feet look like. They had been walking around all day in their sandals. And the roads in Jesus' time were not paved like our roads. They were dirt. Or sometimes they were mud if it rained. Or they were rocks. But they were not clean. They were dusty. So the disciples' feet were really dirty. And usually when people entered someone else's house... A servant would come and help them wash their feet so that their feet would be clean and they could walk around their friend's house without getting it all muddy, nasty footprints. So when Jesus, 
who the disciples knew were so important and so holy and was God, when he sat down and washed their feet, they were all super surprised. That's why Peter said, oh my goodness, Jesus, you're washing my feet. I should wash your feet. But Jesus did that to show us how much he loved us and how we are supposed to serve other people. We are all supposed to take care of each other. So because we can't do it at church this year, I would love for you to wash your family's feet either today or on Holy Thursday next week as a gesture of kindness. When we do it at our church, everybody sits in the front and the first person goes up and the next person comes and washes their feet. And then when they're finished washing the first person's feet, they get up in the chair and somebody else comes and washes their feet. And that way everybody gets a chance to wash each other's feet. And I think it's a really nice way to show somebody that you love them. And it's a nice way to remember what Jesus did for his disciples. Um, and now I want to look at this painting. First, I want you to take out this page. Move this so you can see it. This is the page that you'll be looking at. This, pack, this came in that packet that you got last week of all the different... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This came today. I sent this today with your lesson plan. You're going to find this page. Now, I know that a lot of you can't print off the painting in color. That's fine. You don't even have to print it off in black and white because I'm going to go through it with you now. But I would like you to have this page with the questions on it so that you can follow it with me and you can kind of look and find to see what you see in the painting. Okay, I'm putting myself down here so that we can still see the painting enough. All right, the first question says, find and circle a halo. All right, do you remember what halos look like? They're usually like a circle or sometimes a semicircle around someone's head in a painting or a statue to show that someone is holy. Sometimes they're gold, if, they, if the artist can show it in gold. I see one halo right there, but there are a lot more, so I want you to see where you see one in the painting. Now it says, how many halos do you see in the painting? Hmm. I'm gonna let you have a chance to count it, and then I'm gonna count it with you. Ready? Okay, let's see how many we see all together. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm, I think it's twelve. You can write that on your sheet. All right, the next question says, find and circle Jesus. This is kind of a gimme in a Last Supper picture. Do you know why? Almost always, no matter who the artist is, they almost always put Jesus in the middle because he's kind of the reason that we have Last Supper. He's kind of important. You know, he is. Okay, so Jesus is there right in the middle holding up the bread. Does that picture remind you of something the priest does at Mass? Yep, it reminds you of how the, the priest elevates the host during the consecration. You are right. You're paying attention. All right. Now, the next question, if you know where Jesus is, you're going to be able to find this. It says, find and circle the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the bread that becomes Jesus's body. And it's the same thing that we have when we celebrate communion at Mass. And you've probably seen it if you've watched Father Mark or Father Tim. There's the Eucharist. Jesus is holding it. All right. The next question says, find and circle the chalice that holds Jesus' precious blood. The chalice is a very fancy cup. Do you see a fancy cup in this picture? There it is, right there underneath Jesus' hand. It looks a little bit like the chalice that we use for the blood, the precious blood at our mass. All right, number five says, find and circle a piece of bread. Hmm, let's see. Do we see some bread? I see a piece of bread right there. How many pieces of bread do you see in the painting? I'm gonna give you a chance to check. All right, did you find some? Okay, let's look. One, two, three, four, five, I think that's bread, six. 
And if you find other pieces that I didn't see, you can put them on there. All right. Next question says, find and circle a bottle of wine. Do you see it? Here it is. It's kind of hiding because it's glass. It's a little bit see-through, but you can see the wine at the bottom. And Jesus took the wine and blessed it, and he said, this is my blood, his precious blood. That's why we remember him with wine when we celebrate Mass. All right. Number seven. Find and circle a large jar used to pour water because we just talked about how Jesus washed all his disciples' feet, right? He had to pour the water out of something. They didn't have a sink or a hose back then. Do you see a big jar or a pitcher? There it is. He poured the water out of that. All right. Let's see what the next question is. Find and circle a large bowl used to pour water in. That matches the picture, right? Jesus used the jar and the bowl to wash the feet of the apostles. I'll let you guys know that because you listen to my story. Do you see a bowl? Ta-da! Nice and big so they could put their feet in it, right? Good. Okay, number nine. Find and circle one of the apostles who looks like he is praying. Let's see. Praying might look like their hands were together, or they're asking Jesus for something. I think maybe this person looks like he's praying, and I can't really read. I think inside of those halos is tiny, tiny little letters that would tell you who those apostles are. Unfortunately, the letters are so tiny, I can't read them, so I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. But he looks like he's praying, and if you see somebody else who looks like they're praying, you can point them out because there's probably more than one in this painting. All right. Ten. Find and circle the bag of coins Judas is holding. Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus to the Jewish authorities. All right. Let's see if we see Judas. Hmm. I'll move my picture over a little bit so you can see all the paintings. Now, we notice something earlier when we were counting halos, or I did, did anybody else notice something interesting about the people in this painting? Not all of them have halos. That is true. Now, if somebody doesn't have a halo, I wonder what that means about them. I wonder if that means they are not quite holy or maybe they made a mistake. Maybe the person without the halo might be Judas? Maybe. Okay, so I see a person over here, and he does not have a halo. So I have a guess that this person is supposed to be Judas. Let's see if he's holding up. Oh, I see it. There's the bag he's holding. So the Jewish Pharisees told Judas hey, we will pay you if you tell us where Jesus is. And Judas said, okay. And so they paid him some silver pieces. And Judas felt pretty bad about that later. But at the time, he was kind of excited because he had the money. And that's the coins he has. All right. And then number 11, what are two other interesting things you can see in this painting? There are so many interesting things about this painting. I really like it because it's fun to look at. And you can notice all kinds of things. So... I would like you to write one or two things down that you notice about this painting and you can share it with me or share it with Miss Upton in your Zoom meeting. All right. I hope you have a fun time washing your family's feet and I hope you enjoy looking at this painting. All right. Thank you. Bye.